The test record form must be filled out for each and every cylinder that you are testing that is DOT or Transport Canada rated. The date corresponding to your verification form, your DOT number or your Transport Canada number, the cylinder owner, the serial number of that cylinder, the manufacturer's ID, the size, which is diameter by length, and the specification service pressure. In this case, this will be a DOT 3AL 3000 PSI cylinder. And also whether the cylinder passed or failed its visual inspection. Based upon this specification cylinder, DOT 3AL, we know that we have to test that to 5 thirds its operating pressure, which would be 5,000 PSI, once every five years. You notice that we do not fill in the test pressure until we actually hit that test pressure. The minimum prescribed test pressure is 5,000. But if we overshoot that and go to 5,020, that is the number that we should write in. The operation is very similar to your calibrated cylinder. Again, we're going to make sure that all the water is out of the, all the air is out of the water jacket. We pick out the burette tube that we're going to use and bring that water level down to zero. Okay. And then we're also going to make sure that the, although the cylinder has been pre-filled with water, it is important to make sure that all the air is out of that cylinder. So we're going to turn on the valve water to pump in cylinder when a stream of water comes out of the high pressure bleed valve, we then shut that bleed valve off. Again, we get that slight rise of expansion, which is the city water pressure. That is the beginning of the test. You do not want to disturb that. At this point, we're going to then just go right up to 5,000 PSI on our pressure gauge. It is highly recommended when running a test on a cylinder that you stop briefly at, at or below 90% of the test pressure just to make sure that there are no leaks. Once you hit 90% of your test pressure, it becomes a valid test. In this case, I'm going to stop this right around 3,500 PSI, briefly look at the gauge, make sure I'm not losing any pressure, and look at the water level, make sure I'm not losing any water or gaining any water. I will then bring it all the way up to 5,000 PSI. Again, tap the gauge. And you are required to hold the pressure for 30 seconds. That is why we have a clock. After 30 seconds, and the Pressure is stabilized on the gauge. Your water level is stable. You can then take your reading at eye level. Bringing the breadboard board down to the water level. And in this case, we have 73.4 cc's of expansion. In this case, we went exactly to 5,000. So that is the number that we will put in under the test pressure. And our total expansion was 73.4. We're then going to relieve the pressure. And this will tell us what our permanent expansion is. And in this case, we have 0.8 cc's of permanent expansion. We write that figure in. A little bit more math, we now need to figure out what the elastic expansion is, and that is the difference between the total and the permanent. To get that figure, we take 73.4 minus 0.8, and that gives us 72.6. Based upon this specification cylinder, you're allowed a 10% permanent set. So now we have to make sure that 0.8 is not more than 10% of 73.4. To do that, we take the 0.8, divide it into 73.4, and 
and times that by 100 to express it as a percentage, and we come out to 1.08, well within the 10% requirement for that specification cylinder. The REE column is used only if you're plussing cylinders and on some exemption cylinders. The disposition code, we list some down here, and in this case we would probably return this to service. And then you also have to uh, put your initials in as the retest operator. After the test has been performed, it is required that you do a second visual inspection to make sure that there are no moisture left in the cylinder and that no cracks are found around the valves. This is particularly important with the aluminum cylinders. All troubleshooting on your hydrostatic test machine should be done with your calibrated cylinder loaded into the water jacket. The calibrated cylinder must be used as it is the only stable cylinder that you have. If while performing a test, your pressure drops and your water rises in your burette or your expansion device, more than likely there is an inside leak inside the water jacket. Places to check would be the quick coupler. There's an O-ring seal inside that quick coupler which may need to be replaced. The O-ring that seals the adapter to the cylinder may be leaking. And in some instances you may have a leak through the sidewall. So if, if pressure is dropping on your gauge and water is rising in your burette at the same time, it is a leak inside the water jacket itself. If during a test you are losing pressure on your pressure gauge and you're also losing water in your burette, that would indicate a high pressure leak. To check that, you should look at your high pressure bleed valve, make sure that a droplet of water is not coming out of that. Any of your high pressure connections on your hose, anything on the back of the machine from the outlet side of the pump, if you do not see any droplets of water, that means that it's probably an internal check valve problem on your pump. Those O-rings need to be replaced. If during the, the verification procedure, your calibrated cylinder does not return back down to zero, a quick way to find out what's going on would be to one Hook your high pressure hose from your water jacket lid, zero out the water in your burette or your expansion device, and walk away for a minimum of five minutes. After returning within five minutes, if the water level has risen on the burette, that would indicate that either this valve, which controls water to the water jacket, is leaking, or you have a temperature problem where the water is warming up in the water jacket causing expansion as heat will cause expansion. Since you've taken that hose off of the water jacket lid, you've isolated everything to a low pressure side. So it cannot be anything to do with the actual hydrostatic test console or the pump. It would either be the valve or a temperature problem. If during daily verification, you are coming back down to zero with your calibrated cylinder, but you're not hitting your 1% on your numbers. It's probably that your pressure gauge needs to be recalibrated. We know that the calibrated cylinder is more than likely okay because it is returning back down to zero. You're not losing any pressure or gaining any water. It's just that you're unable to hit the numbers. It is highly suggested at that point that you send the gauge in for calibration.